So I got my start in transportation energy working for a forerunner organization of what is now the Global Automakers. At that time, uh, the organization was the Association of International Automobile Manufacturers, and it was such a fun, fun job, and I worked with really great, great people. And one of the issues that I worked on um, as part of my job um, was sulfur reduction in gasoline. That was a very small part of the job, but it was a part of the job, and that was sort of my entree into the fuels market. And then from there, I went to work for a consultancy that specialized in the intersection of market and policy for fuels and worked there for over 15 years. And when I left there in 2016, I was the senior vice president responsible for all of the transportation energy consulting. So it was a great, great time working in the consultancy. I worked together with my boss and some colleagues in the early 2000s, late 90s, early 2000s, um, starting a service tracking fuel quality specification improvement and policies around the world. And it was so, so fun and, and it's kind of a dry topic in a way, but there was so much change going on and so much policy discussion and countries around the world were, were beginning to engage. So it was just a, a really interesting, fascinating time and I had this opportunity to work on projects all around the world. And it was really, really rewarding and, um, and, uh, and, and a fun experience to work in different countries with different, different clients across sectors, uh, in the auto industry, in the refining industry, for NGOs and for governments on um, fuel quality policy. And then from there, it really grew. Um, I started our biofuels consulting business and started um, a number of services um, under that banner. And I always had worked on alternative fuels projects here and there, electricity or hydrogen or natural gas, but really biofuels came to the fore in the early 2000s. And clients were really looking for um, competitive intelligence. They were looking for um, analysis of the issues in policy and in market. And, uh, and again, it was just a great opportunity to work with clients um, in the fuels industry all over the world to kind of assess uh, what was happening. So it was a, it was a great, great time. And, um, and that's really how I got my start. I really fell into my career, <laughs> but it's been um, it's been fun and it's been um, it's been rewarding. So I started my consultancy, Transport Energy Strategies, in 2016, and it's been so uh, so. It's now been four years, and it's been so rewarding it, to create something really you know organic and organically you and just put it out there into the world and to have such a positive response uh, from industry um, all of those industries involved in the fuels market so it's it's been great and i basically want to continue doing what i'm doing which is working closely with clients to provide first class market and policy analysis um, competitive intelligence and really helping them to shape their strategies as we go into this uh, energy transition. So whether they're a prospective uh, advanced biofuel producer or they're uh, converting potentially a refinery to producing HVO or HEFA, um, sustainable aviation fuels, or whether they are trying to figure out um, what the next step is uh, with the uh, fuel economy um, or um, you know what the fuels market globally sort of looks like or in the US whatever it is um, to to plan to I plan to continue to serve the clients um, and work with them um, as they enter into you know what I think is really the the energy transition. So where do I see my company in five years? Um, well, what I want to do is as I continue to grow and as I continue to expand, one of the things that I want to do is better 
highlight um, and uh, work with um, expert consultants on a range of different issues. So I've already been doing that over the last several years, putting together managing um, uh, consulting projects um, with teams of consultants who have a uh, diverse but complementary skill set uh, to mine and it's worked really 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 well and so i want to capitalize and build on that further so that when people come to the site uh, they see uh, me, they can see and read all about my expertise, but there's also a network uh, behind me. So for me, being part of the Fuels Institute Board of Advisors has been great to grow my network and expand my network. Um, but it's just been great also to really learn and to be with such a diverse group with diverse knowledge and experience um, and expertise to really sit in a room and to learn from them has been really, really in incredible. But I also see being part of the board uh, for me as a way to give back uh, to the industry that has basically given me a career. I mean, when I came out of school, I had no idea <laughs> I was going to work on fuels um, and uh, become a fuels analyst and consultant and creator of consulting services and um, consultant on projects. I didn't have a clue, but I was so drawn to uh, the industry. It's such a fun thing to um, to be part of this, especially now. I mean, there's so much dynamism um, in, the, in the industry and there's so much happening and there's so much changing. I think we're really going into the energy transition maybe faster in places like Europe than, than maybe here. So it presents a never-ending host of issues that are kind of um, fun to, um, you know, to sink one's teeth uh, into. Um, so what I really also appreciate about being part of the Board of Advisors is the rigor by which the research is done um, and the peer review process uh, that takes place. And the fact that when research is put out, it really is about as non-biased um, as uh, and non-partisan, which I think is really, really important um, in this world um, that, that we're living in right now as possible. Uh, so that stakeholders and policymakers have, uh, you know, uh, sound guidance um, by which to make, I think, very complex decisions that are going to need to be made uh, in the coming years. The other thing I really appreciate about being part of the Board of Advisors is the, the neutral platform. I think providing a platform for dialogue and discussion, especially when there's differing points of view and differing experiences is so critical. We really need that. We need that in society um, with the um, arising of cancel culture and things like that um, and the divisiveness that actually exists and it actually even exists um, in the industry. So to have a place and to have a platform to engage in discussion is so important because if you don't understand uh, where someone or where an industry is, is coming from, um, how can you make um, the critical um, decisions and uh, that you need to make, I think, for your business and also, you know, when it comes to policy. So I think the, the Fuels Institute, that platform for uh, discussion and for dialogue is just so critical. And there's really not a place in industry um, where that really exists uh, to that degree. So to be able to bring out some of these cutting edge uh, issues about the future, you know, electrification, biofuels blending and the like, um, and to have a place where that can be discussed amongst all the parties um, and to create some kind of mutual um, understanding, I think is really, really critical. And to be part of that um, and to have a front row seat and to, and to actually, as best as I can, help shape that um, or give input into that is really, really rewarding. And I think it's really going to be very important. And I see that um, as, um, as a role that I can play being part of the board. Thank you.